is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to another excellent video on the Let's Build That App.com channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic morning out there. Today's video, we are going to focus our attention on what exactly is inside of my Hackintosh build because I know a lot of you guys have been wondering in the past what is going on inside of this guy. So today's video, I'm gonna go over all of the internal parts inside of this machine right here. Uh, before I do that, I just wanna say that if you're looking into building out your own Hackintosh, I uh, just wanna say that the installation process is fairly easy in 2019. There are some things that will cause you to pull your hair out and it's a pretty frustrating process, but if you do enough research, and uh, also if you have enough perseverance, one day you'll be able to build out one of these bad boys yourself as well. Okay, so with all that being said, let's talk about all of the internals inside of my machine right here. Uh, this guy I've been using for the last nine months or so, and basically for this entire YouTube business, the courses on the website, and all of my you know external consulting contracting applications, I've been using this one single machine to just pretty much build out everything. So this guy's a pretty much a beast and I really love uh, how it's making my job a lot easier. Uh, one of the main things that I like about it the most is actually the CPU, which is right here. Uh, this CPU, as you can see, is clearly an i9, uh, Core i9, i9-9900K, which is really hard to say, but this guy comes with eight cores and 16 threads. Um, prior to using an i9 processor, I was using an older i7-8700K, which I actually still have right over there, and uh, that CPU is also very powerful. If you want to get the most out of your money, just go with the i7-8700. If you have an extra $150 hanging around, which I assume most of you guys do, uh, I do recommend just picking up the i9 here. Uh, this CPU, the i9, is going to go for about $480 right now on Newegg. Uh, but with that being said, there is also an even more expensive CPU that you can get uh, it's called the 10980XE, also by Intel. And you can try to buy it, but right now, in December of 2019, it's currently all out of stock on the major retailers. So whenever you can get your hands on that, uh, go for that as well. Uh, one of the best parts about having more cores, so this is eight cores and 16 threads, is that whenever you need to compile your projects, such as your Xcode projects or your Android Studio, Visual Studio Code or the terminal, having more cores and more threads is gonna make that process uh, just that much faster. I noticed that this is significantly faster compared to the i8700K. Okay, uh, now with the talk about the CPU over, let's move on to uh, what the heck is actually cooling the CPU, right? So if you look at the center of the case here, this is a very expensive pointer. Uh, the center here is a water cooling block. I believe that's actually the technical name for it. So the cooling block there, it's actually part of a liquid all-in-one cooler. And if you guys don't know exactly what that is, uh, I wouldn't be surprised because I didn't really uh, know what a all-in-one cooler was either. But basically, if you're running a really hot CPU, such as the i9 here, um, this guy is actually going to come uh, default at a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, but you can turbo boost this to 5.0, so five gigahertz, and that's currently the uh, configuration that I'm using right now. So this means that the CPU is running extremely hot at that gigahertz. And so you'll need a very powerful cooling system to make sure that it doesn't melt onto the motherboard. So the all-in-one cooler, what you do is you have a large radiator that's about this size. You screw it to the very top of your case right here, right? And so underneath the radiator, which is right here, are two additional fans. And for this cooler from Corsair, there's two 120 millimeter fans that keeps everything nice and cool. Um, I read that you can also use an air cooling for the actual CPU, 
So what I mean is the standard large ass heat sink. You can put that on top of the CPU and just have it air cool. But I believe that the liquid all-in-one cooler is a little bit faster because uh, the liquid is able to conduct the heat a lot faster than standard air cooling. Okay, so now that you know the CPU and also the cooler that I'm using, let's move on to discussing the motherboard that I have inside of this build. And uh, this motherboard that I'm using is from ASUS and the model is the TUF Z390 Wi-Fi gaming motherboard. Uh, there are actually a lot of different options that you can choose for building out a Hackintosh build. And the reason why I chose this one is because of this case that I'm using is a little bit smaller and it requires a micro ATX board. And this right here is what you would call a micro ATX form factor. Um, originally, when I was looking for motherboards on Newegg, I actually wanted to pick one that came with a display port to support 4K and also to have onboard Wi-Fi, but uh, things didn't work out as great as I had originally planned. For plugging in the display port on the motherboard directly, I couldn't support 4K at 60 Hertz, so that didn't really work out for my large monitor back there, which is what I use every day. And then the onboard Wi-Fi is something that doesn't have the correct drivers on Mac OS. So getting the onboard Wi-Fi uh, just didn't work either. Uh, however, that said, if you are trying to boot into a Windows operating system, the DisplayPort and also the onboard Wi-Fi just works really, really smoothly when you install the drivers correctly. All right. So that is the motherboard that I have, and it also comes with a USB-C port, which is a nice addition. Okay, lastly, right at the very bottom here, this guy, this horizontal board that has the red flashing light there, uh, that guy is the graphics card. And uh, there's a lot of discussion to be had about what exactly you should buy for the video card. But ever since Mac OS Mojave in 2018, uh, I guess Apple decided to no longer sign the NVIDIA drivers. So what this really means is that you can no longer plug in NVIDIA cards for your Hackintosh builds. And basically the solution around this problem is just buy an AMD card because the AMD uh, video cards are just supported out of the box whenever you have a Hackintosh build. Uh, the one that I'm using right now is the AMD Radeon RX 570 with four gigs of RAM. Uh, all of the parts that I mentioned in today's video, I'll make sure to link them in the description notes. That way, if you want to do your own research and you know dive into further detail, uh, you can find the information there. Uh, this card, I don't really game a whole lot anymore. But uh, whenever I need to, let's say, export a video or just do anything for a Chrome browser, uh, this video card does a pretty good job. Uh, later down the road, maybe early 2020, I'll eventually upgrade to a slightly better card. And this guy comes in at around $110 right now. So relatively cheap in terms of video card pricing. All right. So that's mostly all of the important parts that you need for a Hackintosh build. Again, there are a lot of different options for CPUs. Uh, the motherboard, just get anything that's either Gigabyte and ASUS, and you should be able to get up and running fairly quickly. Uh, the liquid cooling is something that you probably have to have if you want to support the i9 here. Okay, so during the editing process for today's video, I realized that I forgot to mention what exactly is the RAM inside of my Hackintosh build. So let me quickly zoom in here and show you the four sticks of RAM that I have. Uh, the two RGB sticks are the Corsair Vengeance Pro, and that's a total of 16 gigabytes. The red G Skill RAM sticks total to be 32 gigabytes. So inside of my entire system here, I have a total of 40 gigabytes of RAM. If you're building out a Hackintosh in 2019 or 2020, I, I do recommend that you just go for 32 gigs of RAM because these two RAM sticks right here are going to cost you about $120 for 32 gigabytes. So relatively cheap. And uh, that's something that I recommend going with. 
Uh, this case right here is the next thing I want to talk about. So this case right here is made by Corsair. And the nice thing about this case is that it's relatively small and it supports a lot of nice features such as uh, neatly packaging your cables in the back compartment here. And uh, also there are some nice little filters for your fans at the very top here and also in the front of the case. So this guy is the Corsair Crystal Series 280X with two RGB fans in the front. And so like I was mentioning earlier, the back compartment is very nice to have because it's going to hold your hard drives, which is what I want to talk about next. So currently I have about five hard drives inside of this build, which is a little bit too much. It's definitely overkill. But if you want to support 20 terabytes of storage space, you can easily configure this system to support that. Now, if you're building out your very first Hackintosh, what I would recommend that you do is to go out and buy a M.2 solid state hard drive. So if you don't know what an M.2 solid state drive is, basically underneath, like underneath this video card here, there's a very small slot on the motherboard that can plug into it a M.2 hard drive. So M.2 drive is about the size of a USB stick, you know, a little bit larger than that, but it's really, really tiny. And there's a slot in the motherboard, you just clip it into there and you screw in the drive. And the current one I'm using is an Intel one terabyte 660P series uh, Intel M.2 solid state drive. Um, the performance of M.2 drives are supposed to be a lot faster, uh, but to be honest, I don't really notice the difference. The best thing about the M.2 drive is that you don't need to run a SATA and a power cable to your motherboard. This means that if you really care about power management, or not power management, but uh, cable management, then you don't need the actual cables to be looping around your entire build here. All right, so now that we're approaching the very end of today's video, I just wanna mention one last very important piece of my Hackintosh build here. And so you can't exactly see it from this angle, but at the very bottom of my motherboard here, I have an external Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter. And the reason why I have this is to enable the onboard Wi-Fi and to also support feature inside of my Hackintosh build. I believe if you try to get an external Bluetooth adapter, you might not be able to get the airdrop to work correctly. Uh, for the Wi-Fi, you can just get a external USB Wi-Fi stick, and that's pretty easy to configure. But uh, again, if you want to support airdrop, just purchase one of these external adapters from eBay. Uh, it sells for about $20 to $30. It's very easy to install, and uh, it makes sure that your system is able to support both Wi-Fi and AirDrop. Okay, so that's pretty much the entire build right here. Uh, we can talk about a lot more in terms of how you actually get your Hackintosh running, but uh, that's just way too much for one video, so I'll probably talk about that a little bit more in a future video. If you have any questions about this entire system, please do let me know. Uh, again, everything is available in the description in terms of all of the internal parts. And hopefully you enjoyed today's guide. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.